And howdy doody to you. Good morning, afternoon, 1.30 p.m. I guess I think it's still morning. Terry Caliendo here from Dedicated Managers. Solving a problem from the last video, um, the last video in this playlist that hopefully I'll have in the proper order. I had showed that I was having problems where um, one, um, you know, I was having issues with searches kind of interfering with each other. Um, and I'm going to show that right now. I've got two independent boxes here. These are two independent searches, but searching for the same thing. So they're using different variables to store their data. Um, as far as pretty much everything's concerned, um, the only thing that's similar is the search query. Uh, so the, you know, the where clause, um, and I can actually show that probably in the, um, uh, the dashboard here. So my search, this search here, is exactly the same as this search. Um, you know, all the, the create UID, create UID, you know, all the, the parameters of the what I'm setting up here are the same. And then those each get dumped into uh, a, a search component that does work on, on each of those. But regardless to say, as far as the setup is concerned, all this stuff is con contained in one variable in one search, and this stuff is contained in another variable, set of variables uh, in another search. So they're independent of each other, other than they look the same as far as the where clauses and the, you know, the ordering and that stuff. So they should get independent results. And so you saw there, there was one of the issues, but I'm going to move this guy forward. Um, and now you'll see that this guy, every time I click next, is going to show the results from this guy, um, Harawan, George, and Tiny Tim. Um, you're going to see it with each next click. So if I click next, you still saw it flash there and then disappear. And then you see it again and then it disappears. And then again, and now once I'm past it, um, I think once I get far enough past it, maybe not. Um, oh, because it's at the end. Um, you know, it 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 doesn't sh it it doesn't show it as much. Um, but as far as we're concerned for right now, you know, every time I click next forward in the forward direction, because this cached result is in front of this one, I get its um, it's it's kind of echoing of data over here. And so what it turns out to be is that Firestore caches results of all searches um, in a local cache that you cannot stop from doing um, with the, um, um, there is a, a cache mechanism. I gotta find what that is. Sorry, I took a break there to, to look this up. So um, the, there's an enable offline data caching mechanism um, that does not work well in the JavaScript side, side and they talk about that, how um, for offline percent is experimental by Chrome Safari. So it's not great in browsers. So you should have it off. I would have it off anyway. Um, and I don't have this turned on, but I'm still getting cached, um, these cached results where this guy is showing up over here. So that's independent of this um, enable offline data, um, you know, of the Firestore um, guides and reference section. Um, but what's happening is independent of that, each search um, stores its own local cache. So I've got a search here that stores a local cache, but that local cache is accessible to any uh, any search that myth, that you know matches the criteria. Um, and since these are similar searches. Um, that's why I'm seeing this guy's results show up over here before this guy goes into the to the fire store to get the actual results. So what happens is when when I click, so if I'm back at the beginning on this guy, and when I click next, the first thing the search is going to do, the fire store search that I'm creating, is it's going to look at any local cached results it can get and then display them. And so when it when I click next, it the this these results fit the search because they're ahead of this search. When I click next, you know my my next pointer um, finds anything after this guy and says you know get me something after him based on you know Firebase's reference points, and these guys fit that criteria. So when I click next, initially from the local cache they show up, and then Firebase goes and reaches out to the to the Fire Store comes back and gets the actual data that's result for the the actual results for the overall database that's accurate for the search. Uh, and the thought behind this um, I found 
um, after asking some questions, I, I did. A, I asked this question on the um, uh, uh, on the 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 boards, the Google Firestore boards. I was talking about how my separate snapshot listeners were interfering with each other, and I, you know, documented the whole thing that was going on. Um, and he came back and said that, um, you know, originally the motivation was that uh, in case a user of a um, somebody of an email client might go into a subway tunnel, they could at least access some of the emails um, before coming out of the tunnel and getting the final actual results uh, when, the, when the actual call to the database ended up going through. So I'll, I'll put a link to this. You can go and read this whole thread. Um, if you're having the struggle that I'm having, this is probably an interesting read of my conversation with um, the Google guys. Um, this guy's actually from Google, which is cool. Um, so very nice of him to give detailed answers to my questions. So anyway, the, the, the way to get rid of that cached result is to ignore any um, cached results. The problem I was having is if this guy doesn't exist, I can still get cached results on this side from, um, from just himself. So if, I, um, if this wasn't here, and don't look at these results, but I click next a bunch of times, um, and then I go back a couple times and I click forward. Well, that because I've already been through this search in the forward direction, you know, that it, it, this has art, these data points have already appeared. They could be cached, which means they would come back with the value of being cached. But um, it does not then, it will reach out to the store, but it won't call my on snapshot listener a second time if the results. Um, are the same and since this is its own search you know those results are the same as what it gets after it goes to the store so again let's say this guy's not here the right side's not here the left side's here I, I get the Muffet and the Bob Vila and then I click back and then I click next and forget that flash that just happened but the Muffet and Bob Vila this is the second time that this this um, search side has seen those results. So these results are pulled from cache um, and it shows it. Then it goes to the store and gets the, re, um, the results from the store, but they're accurate because it didn't change. It's, it's the same thing um, from what it was because nothing changed from when I clicked to the previous and then came back. Um, it's its own search. It's, you know, nothing has changed. Um, so it doesn't fire the on snapshot listener a second time because of the uh, meta changes variable. So when we call on snapshot, there's this variable, the include meta data changes variable, that is, um, if you don't include this object, if I have it just like this, uh, well, just like that, that's the same as including this object with the default value of false. So that's what I'm showing you right now is, is as though I did not have this here um, or I have it and I'm using the default value anyway. But false means that if the data that you first showed me in the cached result was accurate and then you go to the store and get those exact same results, don't call on snapshot again. But if I change it to true, now if the results are the same, call on snapshot again. So where that was getting me in trouble was if this is false, which is the default, so if it's not there, and I have something that says, hey, if the query snapshot data is from cache and it's false, um, if, if it's, yeah, if, if the from cache is false, which means it's not from cache, Took me a while to get there. So if it's if it's not from cache, which means it's only from the database, um, you know, run run this area of the results. And where that was getting me in trouble was, again, if 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 this guy was here, then I could ignore the cached results. That um, if I go back and when I see the Harawan Tim, when I see that flash there, I could ignore that. Um, because that was a cached result and then it went to the store and came back and it got me a new result with, with the, the cached result being um, 
false. So that second query, you know, I could use this to ignore the first one and then show the second one. The problem was with when it was just itself and it was first retrieving its own data that it had cached itself and then goes to the store and got that same result, that second snapshot listener wasn't called. So the first one was only called and the first one was called with the cache equals true. So this would not run at all for my local search, my, you know, the, for when local results to this guy come back. Um, so I was getting no results. It would, it would show me a blank, you know, it would just be blank because I was skipping the functionality based on, on this. So I know that's kind of hard to, to follow. I could go in depth. I've already talked a ton. I probably could go in depth further and show that, you know, each query has, um, a, uh, let me see if I can get into this. Where's the query? Here's the snapshot query. It has a metadata and it says whether or not it's from cache. Um, so this 106 is the same as this 106 where the from cache was true. And then again, the from cache was true. I guess I, I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> I should have planned ahead. Um, but anyway, I had this situation where they were kind of mutually exclusive. And, and so, you know, if this guy was here, then I, I, it would work. But if this guy wasn't here, then it would, this guy would cancel himself out. Um, so ultimately what I needed to do was include this, um, this, this, um, configuration variable and make that true. Um, so that the local results, if the, if the left side, if this guy, you know, found his own results and then went to the store and got those same results, it still fires that second time, but with the value of true. That way I can ignore the first one, which was false. Even though they're both correct, I'm, I can ignore that first one and then I can ignore it over here as, when it comes from over here as well. So I'm always ignoring the cache and only paying attention to the stuff that comes from the database. So that's really the, the crux of it is that um, in this situation, including the metadata change is true, and then only looking at the from cache false, which means that it's never from cache, um, and it's always gonna give me a result from the store, even if the data, especially if the data matches the cached data, um, that, you know, that's where I want this to fire again. Um, so, and then that's where I, where I put that there. So um, I just have to fix this if statement. So now I've corrected it, right? I've changed it from, I'm getting dizzy too, just floating back and forth here. Um, you know, I changed this from false to true, or I included it with true, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and I included this if statement to only update my query results, um, you know, only update this box with new results when the from cache is false or when it's um, not from cache or it's results from the actual database. So now that I've, I've made those two simple changes and I save it, um, I should go back and I'll reload all the data and the application. And so now I'll move this guy ahead a few. And now you'll see when I click next, I don't get that flashing result of this guy's results over here. Um, I'm now ignoring that it's happening. Um, it is getting those results and, um, you know, they're being returned by the query with, with the cache equals false, um, or cache equals true, but that's being skipped. That first call is being skipped by this, this check here. Um, so these guys results are coming over here. I'm just not displaying it. I'm skipping over the functionality. Then I go to the store to get the, the actual correct data. And when it comes back, now it's got a, um, a cache of false because it's from the database. Uh, and so I, I allow my program to execute and update the data so that I'm always only getting um, results that are directly from the, um, from the Firestore. So that's the, the long answer um, to a simple question. I'll put the, um, you know, the link to this where you can go and read um, about my problem and, um, you know, what, the, what they had to say, what, what Google had to say, um, and then where it took um, a while for 
us to communicate back and forth before I finally got the answer, which was the simple question is, how do I disregard the cache? And that's what the on snap, non -snap, snapshot listener make those metadata data changes equal to true, um, and then discard snapshots from cache equal to true, or only you know do an if statement where um, from cache is false. Um, so you know that that was the answer. It took me a long time to get there. It takes me a long time to explain. Apparently, 15 minutes to explain it. Um, I sh maybe if I spent a little more time trying to figure out how to say it quickly, um, it, it might might have come out easier. But uh, it's it's faster for me just to um, you know throw these things out as best I can and then move on with the project. So um, so anyway, Terry Caliendo, dedicated managers. Hope that was helpful. Hopefully, maybe somebody that solves somebody's problem in the future. So that um, you know, if you're getting weird results, um, you know this may be an avenue to look. Anyway, um, feel free to contact me at dedicatedmanagers.com. This is us. This is me. Um, hit the contact button if you'd like to help out, collaborate in some way, or if you've got project that you need help with. Always happy to um, to um, you know consult and help out on a project. Take care. Have a great day.